This game again. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Did you bring the tape this time? You need to stop resisting. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. All right, we are back online. What's good, everybody? Shimmy Cash here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, you guys who are following the channel were subscribed. You probably realize there's a lot of uh, obscure stuff going on in the past week. There's like these rain waterfall videos. People are writing asking me about the burning car video and what's going on and are you still working this job, blah, blah, blah. Yes to all of the above and I'll be happy to explain all that this episode and uh, just talk for a little bit because my channel is my channel. There's a lot of random stuff on there, it's one of the most random channels on the internet, but it's still my channel, my house, so you know I put on what I want to put on there and if you guys want to subscribe you will and if you don't you won't, whatever. <laughs> you know, makes me no different. It's just a platform for me to talk until they decide to ban and flush me from it. But, you know, I got my own hosting and everything, so always look me up in case they ban this channel. You know, Shimmy Cash, Toticos, India Girls, White Girl Cops. There, got it in. All right. So, plug in commercial out of the way. Here's what's going on. All right. So, I'm still doing this little uh, job from time to time. You guys know that I was a delivery driver for all the delivery apps pretty much all of them. Doesn't matter if I'm delivering food, parcels, store, everything from 7-Eleven, the Walmart, grocery store, chicken, McDonald's, you name it. I'm picking it up and delivering it in my Porsche, no less. All right, so I'm all the way over here past the casinos by the strip. I had to pick up this big baby thing. It's like 20 bucks for me to deliver it. So I was like, fuck it, I'll get it and drop it off and I'll be headed home. And this is like one of my methods of fixing some of my bills and problems. I'm one of these people now that's got to work a business and work a job and hustle this and hustle that and it's the state of the nation. I think most people listening to this show are doing something similar or they're not fessing up to it or they're just silently struggling because I already know gas is damn near six dollars a gallon where I'm at so you know unless you have a motorcycle, bicycle or something like that it's got to hit your pocket somewhere even if you're rich you know so people have had to do some lifestyle adjustments and I've had to you know if I have a number to meet I've got to make the income you guys have played the previous shows you might hear me complaining about the job this and that because it's kind of a sucky job yeah and I've had a lot of sucky jobs but that's not really what this show is about surprisingly it might tie into that though um, one of the main topics that I want to talk about today that interests me is the topic of exploitation. A lot of people leave me death threats every week. It's not as daily occurrence as it used to be. Now it's like a weekly occurrence. But, you know, I get death threats. I get stalked. I get harassed. I get followed by people around the world, mostly because they think I exploit women. Now, I don't know where they get this concept from. Because it's impossible to exploit the willing, and as far as I'm concerned, any girl that's making upwards of $1,000 plus an hour ain't getting exploited, alright? I've got videos and even behind the scene videos, I'll probably clip onto this video, I've got girls throwing money all around the room, all over the bed, whatever, then the same girls will go run to the feds and tell them I exploited them, I used them, I did this, I did that. You know, it's a hearsay thing or whatever, you know, most... Most, many, I shouldn't say most, but there are many, many amateur, by amateur meaning non-professional, like the girl next, lives next door to you, many amateur girls uh, will often only get one or two scenes from me, and they'll feel like they're, they owe, they're owed more money, or they should have more movies, or they should have this and that, and then they'll often kick back the, he exploited me angle, after they've went ahead and bought a laptop, bought hair extensions, bought a new phone, bought a new bag, bought some new red bottom shoes, bought some new shit to stunt on their other little whore friends with, and then I'm all of a sudden a bad guy, then I'm in the news, and I got people following me and shit like that. You know, and these people don't realize that I do these little shit jobs, delivery jobs, telemarketing, call center, do all the grunt labor, you know, voluntarily no less, but I do it so that I could fund my projects and fund my company and my visions and this, and surprisingly some people don't even respect that. You know, if anything, okay, it's one thing you want to call my girl ugly in the video, sure, you call her ugly, I didn't make her, so what? But, you know, as far as the website, as far as the DVD, as far as the design, the programming, the site layout, you know, I might spend 80 or 90% of my sunlight, daylight hours working on that shit. And for you to shit on me about that, it hurts my feelings. It actually does, because that's something that's like my sandcastle that I built, right? 
Now, if you got a problem with the girl directly, you think she's ugly, you think she's a whore, you think she's this, you can go email her or look her up or whatever <laughs> and contact her, find out how much I paid her, or I'll be happy to tell you or whatever. And it's like, you'll see what the truth of this so-called exploitation thing is. You know, an exploiter is somebody that swindles, somebody that cheats, somebody that takes advantage of people and says one thing and does another. They're two-faced, and I am not that. I'm not a thief. I'm not a two-faced double talker. I'm very straight and direct with everybody, you know? So whenever I get these, you know, the worms coming out of the fucking uh, the woodwork or whatever you want to call it, telling me I exploit women, I'm this, I'm a bad guy, kill him, hang him, burn him, I've heard it all, you know? I don't need to hear this shit from people that care about me. You know, it's like it, it fucks with me like that, right? That much. Because it's my labor, it's my creation, it's my business, right? Now, you guys might say, you, you might say that this video I'm making right now, it might make you feel uncomfortable. Well, you have the option to push the back button or turn it off or unsubscribe or dislike it or report it or ban it. You know, for all, and go to the fucking extreme if you want to. It ain't my platform, it ain't my electricity, and one day they're going to pull the plug on this shit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I don't put too much weight into it, but for those of you that want to hear me, you know, what's going on in my world, that's pretty much what's going on, you know, and it's been going on for quite some time, you know, I don't know how I could ever shake this label of being an exploiter, <laughs> fuck, what a bunch of bullshit, you know what I'm saying, in actuality, you could say that every job, Uber and Lyft or whoever, and all these other shipped and all these other DoorDash and all these other people, they exploit their workers, you could say they exploit me, they exploit men, women, and anybody else with a car or bicycle or whatever, you know. Employers are out to make a profit, you know. They view me as a product. Just They have created me into my, they have taken my life and turned me into a tangible product, a delivery driver. Just like I've taken a video girl and turned her into my tangible product in the form of that movie file or DVD or video file. That doesn't mean I own the girl. She's not my slave. I don't own her life. I own those little zeros and ones binary numbers in that MP4 video file or that DVD disc or whatever the case may be. Yeah, so a lot of people get it twisted and I really don't like having to defend myself and explain myself, but I feel that often I must do so on a platform where people could at least look me up somewhere down the road. Next time people start hollering that Chevy Cash, he exploits women, he does this, he does that. You know, there's thousands of movies. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on this. You know, it's my investment. It's how I pay myself. It's how I support myself, feed myself, and my family. And for people to knock that shit is very disrespectful to me. Because you're knocking my work. You're not hurting my feelings. I don't have no ego about the girl. You're not hurting me if you talk about me. I'm black. I'm short. My dick. My this. I don't care, motherfucker. It ain't about that. Okay? It's about you're knocking my work my life hours. Now, if you want to judge the quality of my work or my workmanship, I'll accept that, and that's okay. But you're not just going to shit on something that I spend like upwards of 12, 14, 16 hours a day working on. And a lot of people think what I do is easy. If that's the case, you should do it too, and you should take all the heat that I get and deal with everything that I got to do, but most people lack the actual skills to be a webmaster. You know, this YouTube channel is actually a very small YouTube channel because I'm not very well versed in the world of YouTube. I came around before YouTube, and this is very much so a new game to me. So, you know, you guys might look at me and say, hey, this guy, he's got only, yeah, what the fuck's he got, 450-something subscribers or something like that today? You know, my other channel's got, you know, 200,000 subscribers, 600 million views. I mean, you guys are like little ants as far as the YouTube world or whatever. But I do these videos and shows here for people that actually want to take the time to hear me talk. You know, I actually watched an interview on YouTube today with um, with Rico Strong. He was getting he's a porn black porn guy and he was uh, getting interviewed by some TV, whatever, pod show called No Jumper. And there was a comment in the comment section that said, uh, oh, I can't believe he's so articulate. He speaks so well. He's this, he's that. And another guy says, this, yeah, man, it's pretty real. I didn't see these porn people talk, you know, like we're fucking deaf mutes without brains. Man, I'm the, <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the man behind all this. Nothing happens without me, basically. So, yeah, <laughs> shit, man. 
shaking my head about that. So that's that's some stuff from the internet porno world. There's other stuff going on too, but it's mostly more or less interrelated to people disrespecting me and disrespecting my work and making me a scapegoat and making me this like motherfucking evil guy who I'm not, you know? So I feel like I actually had to do a video to clear the air about this because it's something that actually bothers me, you know? Really it does. So there you have it. So. I think that YouTube is actually useful for people to air out their grievances. Uh, some people use it for entertainment. Some people, hey, I'd like to make money with this shit, but I haven't figured it out yet myself. But you know what I'm saying? Since I don't actually have a therapist or you can't always vent and explain shit to people right away like this, then, you know, I got a channel. I'll go to YouTube. I'll turn on my microphone and talk to myself. But Usually I do a show if there's a lot going on in my head and I need to purge what's going on and try to figure out some solutions. So other shit going on. You guys already know the country's kind of falling apart. America, I'm talking about. If you don't already have a house in America, you're fucked, basically. You know, the rents are going up for everybody nationwide by about 40, 30, 30 to 40 percent in the next year. You know, energy, gas prices are up probably about a quarter, 25, 35%. Your money's not going up. <laughs> that means you're all going to have to get second, third, and fourth jobs or move out of the country or something else or do something else to save expenses, you know. So, you know, there's a bit of an ad adjustment period going on and people are getting hit up for the delivery jobs. People aren't even giving tips no more. I mean, just to give you some some example, I did a uh, what I did like 11 deliveries in the morning today and only got one tip for 250. <laughs> so, that's the state of the nation, you know. So, it's like wowzers, what y'all going to do? It's it's um, it's interesting to see. Ready? How yeah, knock on that door. Really six months to a year. Delivery. I feel like the people that are on the bottom are already underwater. You know, they're blue, 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 sinking, drowning. You know, but I think that it's only a matter of time before lower and middle class start feeling the heat more so than they already are. Well, that's my feelings about the country or whatever. But yeah, man, that's really that's really something that's on my mind lately today. Uh, I have to kind of. Uh, doing my best to like sort and separate and segregate people that disagree with my if you basically it's like this okay if you have a problem with me then you need to let me know if you have a problem with my work and the problem is with my work only exclusively then you need to address me and be very specific about that otherwise i'm going to take both of those things as rolled into one or whatever you know and maybe i'm a as p as erica badu said i'm an artist i'm sensitive about my shit maybe that's the case but this is my thing toticos indian girls white girl cops shimmy show this channel this stuff pays me it pays my bills it's my movies it's my life's work whether y'all like it or not it doesn't matter if i was a rapper it wouldn't matter if i built sand castles or painted oil paintings it's how i choose to spend my time and if you don't respect my work or my time and you want to belittle it at every single fucking opportunity or whatever then i don't want nothing to do with anybody in that got me okay because i don't devote 80 90 percent of my day to doing something that people are going to shit on it makes me feel bad especially when i'm working towards goals and shit like that that you know, pretty much more or less benefit everybody in my circle. So it's like, what's it going to be? I've done this and played this rodeo time and time again, like for years and decades, it seems. But I just can't find people to, uh, you know, it, it's it's a diffi it's difficult for me. That's all I got to say, man. And you guys aren't in my shoes, so you don't know what I'm talking about. You guys might be saying to yourself, man, fuck that shimmy guy. Rich motherfucker, got a Porsche, got a bike, going all the way to Thailand, going here around the world, and I'm stuck in my zip code. Well, that's probably because you do the same thing that you've been always doing. You don't take the risks that I take, and you don't invest your whatever little money you make from your shit job, which is probably better than mine, you choose to not invest it in your own business or ideas or anything to further push you down the road for the future. And that's your fault. You know, you have the, just like, just like I don't buy stocks and I don't buy insurance and shit like that. That's my fault. I pay the price for that later in life. Okay. I don't have Roth IRA, 401k, life insurance, death insurance, health insurance. I got car insurance just because the crackers need me to have it for not suspending my license. Otherwise I wouldn't have that. Okay. So I'm very minimal in life. Okay. I apologize for saying cracker for those of you that I've offended, <laughs> but I'm just saying it's, it's real shit. I don't really mean it like that, but it's coming out that way. This is the unfiltered me at the end of the day here. So 
you know, in dealing with this this world, what are we going to do? Can't we all get along? <laughs> well, the answer is it actually doesn't matter. And I say that because I feel like, at least as far as America is concerned, the plan is already in place for like the next... I don't know, man. At least the next four to five years are already gummed up. The works are gummed up. COVID, the economy, the elections, the gas, the war, everything's fucked up. And it's not going to unravel instantly because it didn't come together instantly. So I predict really the next about four to five years are going to be very, very rough. So in my personal opinion, this is a very good time to uh, stack your money up. If you have a car, get it, maintain it. If you have a house, keep it. You know, now's a good time to hold on to your shit, start stacking up your little chips for harder times, which are already here, but they're going to get even harder. So now is not a good time for you to have maxed out credit cards, bad health, to be overweight, to be sick, to be fat, to be broke down, to have a car that's breaking down, to have, you know, shoes that are worn out. You know, now is not a good time to be on low battery mode. The shit is hitting the fan right now, and you need to make a plan, in my opinion, to go and circumvent that. Unless you already have your life set up. You know, maybe I'm the one panicking like the sky is falling. Maybe the rest of you guys listening to this shit, you have a well-paying, good job. You're on a government pension, welfare, disability, something like that. And you got nothing to worry about. Well, good for you. Shimmy Cash fucking applauds you with his weightlifting gloves. Yay. Well, I wasn't born with the same tools or the same, you know, set of whatever. So I'm in a different boat. And I accept that and all the risks that go along with it. And I'll just find a way to make it my own. So, you know, you guys don't have to copy my plans. I always tell everybody, even my own kids, you know, like, hey, man, you don't have to use me as an example or a template. I'm just doing this the best way I know how to with the tools I have and the information I have. And there's probably a better way, but I'm just doing it the best way that I know how. Okay. So, you know, take that shit for what it's worth or whatever. I am not the smartest guy in the world. I only got a 117 IQ. There's a lot of people smarter than me. You know, there's few as experienced as me, but there's a lot of people smarter than me that can work this computer, work the mic, work the mouse, do everything, work the girl, work their dick. They could do everything better than me, but most of the people don't have the testicles to do it. Therefore, I'm doing it as best of my ability. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you guys ain't got to listen to me at all. Maybe none of my advice applies to you. Maybe you haven't, maybe you're not working a business and working a job and traveling and doing all the shit that I'm doing. So, you might just have to go and watch cartoons and somebody pays your bills all day. <laughs> Great for you. I hope it lasts, you know. But, you know, when the day comes where you got to stand on your own legs, like, you know, you don't want to be like a two-legged tripod is all that I'm saying. You know, shit is weird. And for those of you who are grinding like me, who you do have the multiple jobs and the this, and you're still not getting by, it's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's because the system is inherently broken. If you were living in any other country in the world, most people around the world work one job. Even in China, they have a common thing they call the 996 culture, where they work 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week. Yeah, well, they're still working one job for one company. They're not going to work two, three, four jobs like Americans. You know, yeah, what do you do, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm an Uber stripper, delivery, so-and-so person. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Pick one, motherfucker, you know? So it's like... But that's the state that the company, the, the world is going to. You know, people are going to have to be Walmart greeters and barbers and combination two, three jobs if they want to maintain any type of decent standard of living, I would say, unless you have an upper echelon, you know, or you're grandfathered into a job or you have a tech job or something that's pushing you over, I would say, really the comfort, the minimum comfort level for America is literally about 60, 65 K a year. If you're not getting at least that on paper as a bare minimum, you are fucked. That means you got to live with somebody, get a roommate, shack up or work multiple jobs or work a job in a business like me. And who knows how long that's sustainable for, right? So that's, that's great. But some of you may, may have been birthed into families that are more fortunate than that. You know, you might have a house, a land, a, a condo, an asset, parents that actually give you shit or something along those lines or whatever, you know. So, you know, it is what it is. Your mileage may vary. OK, but I'm just telling you guys what I got to do. Born in my shoes as a black Ethiopian, you know, this is what I got to do. I'm behind the ball and these are the skills that I'm born with. And that is what it is. 
Also, don't assume that I could do everything that you can do who you're listening to this show. I mean, like, just because you can drive a forklift doesn't mean I could drive a forklift, okay? I could ride a bike, drive a car, fly a plane. It doesn't mean I know how to operate a forklift, okay? It doesn't mean I have the specialized skills to do X, Y, and Z. Now, I can learn if I apply myself, but I don't know that out the door. For instance, like, I can't be a tow truck driver. Even though I got a Class A license, all that shit, hazmat, who knows, who cares... I have no experience towing cars, so I can't be a tow truck driver, so that other training I have is irrelevant. I have a lot of things that I could be doing, but they're not actually applicable or practical, at least where I'm at right now. Nor do I have the time to do it. What makes you, and what, the really trippy part about people that are on me about this get a job shit, what makes you think that I have the time and energy if I gotta wake up at three, four, five in the morning, right? And my webmastering, whatever work isn't done until four or five in the afternoon that's a 12 hour straight shift where i'm submitting videos posting this i'm basically trolling hunting for customers i got to go out and get them myself and lasso them with a rope like a cowboy you know what i'm saying that's that's marketing that's internet marketing for you and that encompasses a lot and is way more skilled than the average person if you think that you're good at your job i want you to sit down and try to make a goddamn sale i'll give i'll give a person a thousand dollars if they could sit down here and just using the tools that i got a little shitty chinese laptop and make one sale by the end of the day for any of my sites without promoting them without you just doing you're the expert man let me see how you pull that i'll pull that off let's see how take how long it takes for you to get that two dollar 95 cent sale you know it's like if you guys only knew, you know, but I don't, I mean, it's like I often don't have the energy, nor should I have to have the energy to explain my occupation to people that aren't even in that field. You know, how ridiculous is that? I don't, I don't like be jumping on people like, what do you do at your, what are all the specifics? How do you do, you know, oh, you repair diesel engines? Well, what did you do this morning from 930 to 1030? You know, it's like, fuck, man, I'm not digging like that. I don't have the time or the energy, so... You know, again, I'm looking at my clock here in the computer. I'm at 21 minutes. I've been ranting for a really long time. That means that I'm really energized about this shit. How would you guys like it if you had to do your job? And you, well, some of you might go through this actually. But how how many? Let me let me just do a survey, please. In the comment section below, please, guys, tell me how many death threats you receive in your job on a typical week. How many times do people just start problems for no fucking reason? about shit that happened years ago during your typical work day you know leave leave comments below you know for those of you that you guys want to uh a lot of people say oh yeah shimmy they write in the comments oh shimmy i want to be like you i want to make movies like you yeah bro when we go to vegas we can hook up and blah 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 yeah and all this fellowship and brotherhood shit you know what i'm saying i'm like yeah okay you want to go fuck these hoes and this and that i get that you're a normal man all right but do you want to deal with the blowback and the heat and the type of lifestyle that I have to live and the answer is probably no you know you, you don't you don't want to walk around with eyes behind your back have fuckers following you through airports train stations trying to set you up and trap you got fake hookers coming at you in LAX here and there and you know you, you got a whole task force on you just because some pussy ass hoed and told some lies on you basically starting off saying that she exploited you which was the topic of this show in the beginning 20 minutes ago that's a very big word i'm actually I, I actually looked it up on the phone and got to get the dictionary definition i'm gonna read it off to y'all actually hold on a minute hold on just a second here since i'm on the mic and i'm hot round. Right? hey siri define exploitation exploitation means the action or fact of treating someone unfairly in order to benefit from their work do you want to hear the remaining one? Oh yeah It means the action of making use of and benefiting from resources. Mm-hmm. The action or fact of treating someone unfairly. No, I don't do that to people. I'm not a swindler. I'm not a thief. I pay everyone what they're promised. You can you can look through my library of over a thousand movies and you can't find near a girl that didn't get paid what she was promised got her test done she got her model release signed she knew what she was getting she knew what she was into and on top of that 
<laughs> people are not re people are not retarded. I give girls my Instagram, this very channel you guys are listening to YouTube. I show them my websites. I show them the last 20, 30, whatever girls who did the same shit they're about to do. So they know exactly what they're getting into. There is no exploitation. The so-called exploitation is a cop-out once these girls find a new boyfriend, find Jesus, want to get married. Now I'm the motherfucking devil. Why? Oh, because you needed $1,000 to buy. I have one girl, she actually, what did she do with the first $600? She bought her boyfriend a pair of Air Jordans, came back the next day, and then uh, did another video for half price. Now, she went and bought the nigga some Air Jordans, right? This is the same girl that ran to the police like a month later, talking that exploitation Indian country shit. Raina from Indian girls, in case you guys are wondering. So, you know, it's like that. So, I all of a sudden, I am the scapegoat. Shimmy Cash is the scapegoat once these girls want to want to like so-called cleanse their image but the problem is they most of them have been sex workers and whores for decades long before they met me they've been selling pussy i'm like their 10,000th client but you know like any girl will do she'll look over at me and see like who could i stick this on who could i blame this on oh blame it on the nigger blame it on the black guy blame it on the guy out of town blame it on that yeah that guy over there that fuzzy haired nigger yeah he exploited me yeah kill him kick his ass do that his name's shimmy yeah, yeah, talking about you, Dorian A. Peters, California Bar ID 261863. Go get him. Follow him to Sasua. Follow him to Dominican Republic. Entrap him. Send a hoe. Do everything you can in your power. And even though most of this shit ain't legal, and girls will do this shit to save face. Sometimes they do it to make money, but a lot of times they do it for the clout, for the, the fame, the so-called fame, but most of the time it ends up blowing in their face once I... Uh, post pictures of them throwing money around and this and that and stuff like that so you know it's a game that I'm used to playing and I accept the role of being the so-called bad guy if I have to I don't have no goddamn friends hardly anyway so it doesn't really matter like that but I'm just saying a lot of girls mostly amateur models mostly will use that unscrupulous path to blame the uh, producer and it doesn't matter where they they could have couldn't have could have been with some other guy they made just like foot videos with or whatever but usually porn producers are pretty nerdy guys right these are the like me like I say to myself all the time I'm a sub five guy on a scale of one to ten right? I'm like a probably a three out of ten or something that's why I got so many goddamn problems right so you know the girls will pin this problem on the producer even though she's got a boyfriend that whips her ass gives her black eyes all this kind of shit he's I right. he cool you know, me, the nigga that paid her, did this, hired her. <laughs> I'm the bad guy, right? So that's just how that's just how the chips go down. So that's just what's gonna happen to you guys, unless you're like a perfect ten model with your own camera. When you got to hire these girls, it's gonna be cool at first. Maybe once you make a little dollar or two, they're gonna come back. And even if you don't make a dollar or two, they're gonna come back and blame all their problems on you. Because they're gonna say, Jenny, all my problems started as soon as that video came out, so and so. I'm like, get out of here. You know, girls that are, uh, am I'm talking like amateur streetwalker girls from other countries and shit like that, they have a plethora of problems because they're always burning a new man every couple days. You know, ripping them off, stealing from them, stealing from me, doing this. You're dealing a lot of, uh, like, um, street worker, street walker, street prostitute type of girls that you see in a lot of countries. They're basically criminals. They're thieves. They're there. They're setting you up to rob your house. You know, you're thinking this girl's cool, taking selfies and shit in front of your TV, but she's really taking a picture so she can send it to her boyfriend and steal your PlayStation 3 while you go to the gym. Shit like that. True story. You know, so it's like... That's what you have to deal with when you're a producer, when you're in my world, when you're in my shoes and you're dealing with hard headed third world monkeys, you know, most of the time that shouldn't be in front of a camera in the first goddamn place most of the time. But, you know, they'll say shit. Oh, I've got modeling experience. Oh, I took pictures before. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got a friend, too. I'll bring her, too. Yeah. It's all good in the hood, right? So, you know, over the last couple of years, I've actually really only been using agency model girls for like more than 90, 95% of the time. Yeah, because there's no heat, there's no blowback, they're professionals. They show up, get the job done, go home, and they do more of it or whatever. So that's the way it should be, in my opinion. I like dealing with professionals, so I've gone that route because, you know, street, street niggas are grimy. They always want more. They always expect more and think they're worth more, and they're not. And it's also because they're ethnic, too. Yes. <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that. Yes. 
<laughs> Ethnic girls basically have a lower SMV value. This means Asian, black, Latina, everything non-white, and really non-blonde girl has, if you're not blonde, deduct points from, from your score of a perfect 10, basically. It's just the way the, it's the, way the, way the modeling world works, right? So most of your heat's going to come from people on the lower end of the scale because they can't get more work. They're going to blame their problems on you. They're going to blame why they can't get a boyfriend on me. Oh, oh, he's seen my video, so-and-so. That doesn't matter, I tell him. If a nigga's seen your video, he'll want you more. If he doesn't want you after he's seeing your video, he doesn't, I, <laughs> he doesn't want you in real life either. So... Yeah, man, that's, that's that's what it's like to shoot porn and be a producer and to be me in my shoes. You know, to be a small guy going up against very big companies and still maintaining a very competitive ranking, even though I'm just doing a one-man show. It's just me here, you know, with the occasional, you know, hired-on camera girl or whatever. But it's like, it's just me, nigga, running the website, uploading the video, posting the thumbs, doing the trailers, doing this, customer service, everything. So... Again, for a motherfucker to go and say, oh, you exploit women, you know, it's like, okay, whatever. And you know what else I do, too? I'm the cis admin, network admin, customer service, blah, 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 blah. You don't care. I get that, all right? Fuck it. So that's pretty much all I got to say, man. Just If you, you guys that have stayed on this, this, uh, this show or episode this long, please just remember to respect my work. OK, you're allowed you're actually allowed to disrespect me. I'll even go that far. You could call me names. You could do this. You could do that. But please don't disrespect my work because I put in a lot of time to make these movies, do these shows, do this hustle. And it's all completely voluntary. This is my company. I don't work for nobody. These YouTubes are for me. If you can't get that yet. So, you know, you might see a lot more random stuff on the channel. Waterfall videos, cartoons, burning cars. Whatever I feel like I need to put on there. I think it might need some more contortion stretching girls on there tomorrow. So whatever I feel, I'm going to do that. It's my personal channel. I treat it as my house. If you're listening to this show right now, welcome. You're a welcome guest in my house, so long as you respect the rules and don't mouth off. You know, and this also goes for, you know, I say it again. My mama leaves comments on every goddamn video. Mama, I love you, but stop doing that shit. It's undermining my work and it's disrespectful. That'd be like me coming in your classroom when you're a teacher making all kinds of hoopla. You know, don't disrupt the flow. You're not the only person on this channel. Please and thank you if you could have the respect for that. It's a goddamn shame I got to say this on the internet, but, you know, you, you, you got comments on like 800 fucking videos. You got your own playlist of me with 700 videos. Why? Oh, I know. You don't have to pay rent. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's going on with the channel and that's what's going on with me and my world. There will be more videos, more on the way, but in the meantime, I actually have to uh, eat and live and blah, 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 and my next movies are going to be probably a couple months out before they come out. Yeah, because I got to get my shit together and get this this budget shit straight, etc. You know, talk does not cook rice. Girls do not work for free. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that think I exploit girls, if I exploit them, how come I can't get any right now? If I got so much pimp game, I should be able to just say, say, bitch, come here, let's make a movie, you know, <laughs> you know, if I'm that good of an exploiter. But the fact is, I am not. And that's not factual. So I got to pay cash money just like everybody else. A booking is a booking is a booking. Right. So please don't fault me how I make my way through this world. If you do, I probably will just stop communicating with you. And that's all there is to it. So, yeah, that's all I got to say on this show. There'll be more, and if I feel like talking about more, I'll do more, and, you know, whatever. Thanks for listening so far. Uh, you guys don't even worry about that like, subscribe, join shit. I don't even care at this point. Uh, there'll be enough, like, rainfall, waterfall, bird videos to get enough of my thousand subscribers for the live shit or whatever anyway. I figured I got to do it without you fuckers anyway. You know, this channel has so many, like, ghost watchers that are too scared to even subscribe and have my name in their thing because their girlfriend might see or their wife might see or, oh, you subscribe to Shimmy Cash. Oh, there's girls on that channel. No. Oh. <laughs> I totally understand. Look, I don't need your goddamn subscription. This is just a little channel for me to vent and talk. So if you guys want to know a goes on behind the scenes of an adult video producer slash runner slash whatever world traveler you've come to the right place this is the shimmy cast channel and thank you for listening and thanks for your time that's all i got to say for tonight all right y'all take it easy peace and hair grease buy my movies want your money honey
Let's, Let's get them. You ready? Yeah, knock on that door. Delivery. We got all this money over there. What is this? You got all this money going on over here? Where'd you get this money from?